Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Hawi Allah. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. This is a channel update, so that way you brothers and sisters can know the various channels that we have and where we put our content. What we highly recommend you do is to click on the different links, subscribe, and hit the bell notification, so that way you can be alerted of any new content that we upload. As you know that we are in the time of the end where there's going to be a lot of information suppression. So we want to make sure that you brothers and sisters are able to have access to the information that you need to know as you're growing spiritually, being built up, and also fighting and striving to receive everlasting life. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Shalom, brothers and sisters. We want to give all glory and praise to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Praise and mercy be bound to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are doing this work in truth and sincerity and await for the sudden coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamash Of course, right now we're like a week before the, the, the summer madness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think that was at a song back in the day. It's not that good. <laughs> One of them uh, old school songs. But um, yeah, so right now, it's the calm before the storm. We'll put it like that. The calm before the storm, because as you know, once Memorial Day weekend hit, hits, that is the beginning of summer. Right now, school is out. Um, you know, high schools having their graduation colleges, people graduating or finishing off their, their year, and they're gonna have a summer uh, to remember. And so right now, you know, we're just basically talking, to, just talking to a guy, an older gentleman um, of, uh, from uh, Mexican descent, probably like in the 60s. And we were just talking about how, um, you know, different things, about how the society is just collapsing, how they're putting drugs on everybody, how a lot of uh, the people are becoming homeless uh, out in these streets, and they're basically having to survive, you know, with the homeless camp that's actually down the street that he was talking about. And basically what it is is that they've been st and they're in darkness to the point where they're okay with just being out there because they're gonna get their meals, they're hurt, the ambulance is going to come pick them up. If they do something bad, they'll go to jail for a few days and toss them back out. And then they come back out here and get high and forget about their life. Yeah. So he was talking about how that's darkness. So here we're talking about the light, the light that's in the gospel. Um, in fact, we, were, we had something we were going to bring out last uh, few weeks ago, but it was, the wind was so bad, nobody was even out. It was so hard to even preach. Yeah, you know, nobody really came out the wind was so bad, it was knocking on camera and signs. But one of the things we talked about is just the importance of the gospel and how the gospel helps um, you know, us gain understanding. It also helps with peace. It brings unity. So what we'll do, we'll just go into a few different precepts that goes into that, start with like Psalm 133. Is it for brethren to dwell together in unity? The con, so that's the, that, that's how we uh, came into it. What, what David was saying that how how good and pleasant it is to, to dwell together in unity with your brethren. 
because that's what it's all about. Uh, Yahweh Shah said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. And, uh, that, that's how we want to uh, treat either treat so I can treat each other how we want to be treated in this, in this gospel because that's how you're staying in the light and not going into darkness. That's right, man. That's right. I'm going to read verse 2. Verse 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that run down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirt of his garment. That's right, brother. Like the first verse said, we all in unisys. You know, what's yeah. the word? Unisys. 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 You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like it said, like how the oil flowed down and went down. It went smooth down to the garment, man. Uh, down his beard, down his neck, down his garment. That's how we, all, when brothers in unity, you in unison, man. I mean, everything just flow together. Yeah, yeah, you're in harmony. Like, in harmony, that's the word I'm yeah, looking harmony. for. Just like the, you know, just like how water flow. It flows smooth and in harmony all together at the same time, man. All yeah. on the same page. Yeah, just yeah. like the oil flow down Aaron's head, or down his head, down the side of his face, his beard, yeah. down his neck, down his garment. It, it, it was a, a smooth flow, man. Everything is in harmony together. All the brothers is in harmony on the same page, speaking the same thing. Yeah, go ahead. in 1 Corinthians yeah. 1 and 10. Yeah, get that. Everybody in the, on the same page in harmony, speaking the same thing, man. Yep. We don't have no division. Yep. You know? Yeah. Everybody, everybody basically knows what the other brother uh, is, is thinking uh, and what he's doing. You know what I'm yep, saying? Yep. According to the scripture. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahushua HaMashiach, that we all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, and right. in the same judgment. That's the same thing that uh, that the scripture just read, the brother just read in, um, in Psalms 133, man. Right. We all on the same page, you know, in harmony, yep. speaking the same thing, with no divisions amongst us, man. Yep. Nobody bringing in heresies, nobody bringing in other doctrine, and you know we might have our little disputes amongst each other, but it gets worked out, man. Right. It gets worked out, and then we get back on the same page again and, and keep going. Yep. You know? Yeah, because a lot of times it's like uh, when you're trying to keep the unity, you got to understand like. Uh, Everything like the brother said, you gotta treat you gotta treat your neighbor how you want to be treated. That would really like be the first step. So a lot of times if you're if you're basically selfish and you're looking out for self to gain something over somebody, then that's where the, the uh, distrust comes in. This is where people feel used and abused. And then you know you got people that take sides and start being fractious. They start that's where these divisions come in and people want to uh, separate really over their own carnal desires. And that's why the brother said. Unity, peace, harmony. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what this is about. If you're, if we're gonna, Jerusalem is the city of peace. So how you got the city of chaos in the body? You can't have that. So like the brother brought out, you know, speak the same thing and have the same mind. You got some? Yeah, I got some. This is Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, and in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, mm -hmm. disturb, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Right. Bless them, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another, mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Mm. Come. Yeah, that's that. A whole list of things yeah. that brothers got to be uh, in unison with, man. Yeah, Come right. on. It's a whole list. <laughs> wow. Like that, yeah. the, it, when you in the brotherhood, this is the, the list that brothers got to be in, in, on the same agreement with, man. Yeah, right. Everybody got to be doing these same things. Let the brotherly love continue. That's right. 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 Get, 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 read that part again. They have like a list of things. Yeah. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Yeah. Be not wise in your own conceit. That's why one of the things is like if you, if you feel 
like you got something that you learned, bring it up to a brother. Yeah. Just bring it up to a brother. Don't be wise in your own conceit. Say, hey man, I was reading this. You know, I'm trying to understand what you think about it. And then the brother will, you know, you let the brother, like the wisdom hit the brother. And then it just so happened, he'll see the same interpretation. But you know what? I thought it was that. Yeah. That's kind of how you do. Because you're not trying to be wise in your own conceit. Because you know that bringing in a false doctrine causes division. Yeah. That's what it, uh, heresies do. Heresies cause divisions by, by, by just the nature of it being introduced. So don't be wise in your own conceit. And that's why a lot of times we always talk about like keeping it simple, like learn the principles. You know, there's certain prophecies you're gonna learn, grow. We're talking about taking the milk, you know, and drink, drink the sincere milk. You know what I'm saying? Grow thereby. You know, but the brother brought up uh, this right uh, here. Just, uh, some brothers like stay on the milk, man. Yeah. Until you get some teeth to chew the meat. That's right. You know, it like some brothers like <laughs> ain't finna say nobody's name. Yeah. But you got young brothers that trying to, you know, I ain't saying that you can you is you can correct the elder if you see he's wrong, but when the elder is not wrong and you don't know what you're talking about, bro, you need to stay in your place. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? You got to stay in your place, man. Stay eating on, stay drinking the milk. Yep. Uh, get that from this is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. And I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, when e as like your, even as unto babes in Hamashiach. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying, and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Yeah, and that's talking about the people that were still on the mill. That's right. Now right. they couldn't even understand certain things and then they were causing uh, divisions over stuff they didn't understand because they were still yet carnal in their mind and still not have grown in their understanding. And, and Paul was saying he couldn't even introduce certain things or talk to certain things about them because they wouldn't even be able to bear it. So a lot of times the brother may have a question about something deep like some prophecy, and it's like, bro, like, hey, I'm gonna be real with you. You know, you need to just stick on the principles first. You just got in, bro. Because what happens is, you'll get caught out there watching another group trying to bring something in, or maybe some guy that got that got removed for being a heretic. Now you still not realizing that you're simple in your mind. You're listening to a heretic, a heretic bringing you out and, th and throwing you stuff. Now you thinking you deep. Then you got out there, you saying stuff, contradiction and blaspheming, and not even realizing it. So that's why a lot of times we just do that for your own safety. One, to keep the peace right. in the body. So right. like it tells you, we're gonna go in and get to another one. That gives this is Ephesians chapter four. Um, we'll start at verse, uh, we'll start at verse one. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein ye were called with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering for bearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So you, your work and your labor should be trying to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. See, you know what's interesting is like, we, had a situ if we, if we have a situation where a brother gets corrected over a doctrine that yep. he thought was correct. Like, for example, like me and the brother, there was a brother, there was a, a so-called brother at the time that brought out a false doctrine. Me and the brother corrected him. It was because other brothers in the body didn't know about it, we didn't even let it be known. We kept it private because we're trying to maintain the peace. Leave that to be a situation between with the brother being corrected privately and, get, and him agreeing that he didn't understand, at least at the time he agreed, that he needed to go back to the drawing board and that it wasn't what he thought it was. And brothers didn't even know about it because we were trying to keep the unity and the bond of peace in the body. Now, he didn't understand that and later brought it out to other guys year, a couple of years later or whatever that didn't even even know, that didn't even know that he had been corrected about the doctrine before. And then it brought forth what? The sedition, a, a division. It brought forth a division. So a lot of times these same, these same situations we can avoid this thing if we just take a lowly estate and meekness and basically understand that anything we teach that we bring out can lead to a, a, a damnation, okay? And a lot of times, 
if you're on the wrong side of the thing, you can really believe that you're right when you're teaching the doctrine. But one thing we we'll always say, these brothers right here, we're with each other. If y'all are gone and separated and y'all building with each other, y'all ain't got no unity anyway. Yeah, right. So it, it shows that if you're, it, it shows that if a brother, if you can't allow a brother, if, you, if you're in the same metroplex, if you're in the same metro as another so-called brother that you call a brother and you can't even step into his house, the brother just read out that you got it to be hospitable, right? You just read it about being showing hospitality, being hospitable, right? Taking in brothers into and, and your home and basically being brotherly towards them. But if you're in the same metro and you're thinking that you're showing love to another brother, but that brother can't even go step foot in your crib and y'all live in the same city, that's fake love right there, my brother. You gotta be able to show hospitality in this thing as a brother in the faith. Right, that's all part of the unity yep. that the, that we reading in this you know now that's as right. we go on I'm going to just finish it up real quick verse 4 there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one Lord one faith one baptism one God and father of all who's above all and through all and in you all so when you go into this, there's a, there's a the unity, the word unity, thank you. The word unity is, a, is deals with oneness. Right. That's what uni means. Uni means one. It means all together. University, universally, one, together. Yeah, we gotta be one accord on this. Yeah. Right, man. So that's why it talks about the oneness of everything. That's why he said one this, one this, one, one. Because you all gotta be on one accord of the same mind, in the same body, in the same spirit, under the same one true God, Yahweh, under the same Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. That's what they, that's what, uh, what they spoke about in Acts, whenever they, uh, whenever everyone was selling all their land, mm -hmm. selling all their goods, and taking care of each other, you know, that's looking right. out for each other. They was all in, in unison. They said they was all on the same accord. That's right. Bring, 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 they all had the same mindset, yes. man, on what needed to be done to get the gospel uh, pushed, right? That's the right. correct way. Right. This, let me give this precept right quick to what the eye is saying. This is uh, Psalms 1, 141 and verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. So, it's, it's nothing wrong with other brothers correcting each other, man. You know, and, and that's what I had, look. Look what I had holding with my other finger. 17, 27, 17. That's the spirit. That's the spirit, that's unity. That's on the same accord. The brother just called out this other precept I'm holding with yeah. my thumb. That's right. Iron sharpeth iron, man. Come on, man. And this is this is that's what unity is about in the brotherhood, man. That's right. You you, you other one, it's okay for a brother to correct the other brother. Yep. There ain't nothing wrong with that, man. You don't supposed to get offended by it, and you just take it. You know, you let if somebody come up with a revelation or a doctrine, you run in by two or three brothers, and you be like, yeah, man, that's on point. Or another other brothers might be like, nah, man, look at this precept right here. That that's yeah. And that's how iron sharpens iron, man. Yeah, right. That's how we get the point sharp on this thing, man. We get sharp, we get sharp with it. Everybody mm -hmm. get on the same accord, speaking the same thing. You know, and we weed out all the false stuff that comes along in inside the body, it gets weeded out. Because yeah. everybody's on the same accord as flowing, just like the oil that was put on Aaron's head. <laughs> Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, breaking out the leaven. That's why I see a lot of times, we've over the years, we've had stuff that we've talked about as far as doctrine. We might have not have done a lesson on it, but we already discussed it. And it's just something that you say, okay, maybe down the road we'll bring it up. But we always we always do it because we for one, we were in a place where false where where false where, where false doctrines were being pushed with clearly true doctrines being overshadowed. So we're not going to continue that when we left from among that. Just like the Athenio with Kenaz thing. Yeah. Why are we going to sit there and be a part of something when they know that the answer right there, and then we're going to sit there and be, okay, we're just going to agree with this lie. At that point, we're serving man. 
a lot of times people be thinking that the reason why they uh, their doctor got corrected is because a brother got an ulterior motive against you. No, you if, if the doctor came out and it was wrong, the, uh, somebody got to check it and correct it and say, hey, listen, that's not it. Now, we're not going to come and do you like another group would if you're still in the body. But if you go outside the body, you start teaching a false doctrine, you fair game, like you fair game, like a deer running out there in the field. You feel me? Yeah, like the brother said too, like uh, being uh, following the man, like how Paul said, we're not supposed to do that. And he also mm -hmm. said, don't be a man pleaser. That's right. 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 Yeah. yeah, so the doctrine is, is, is uh, that's the reason why those doctrine corrections come, because false doctrine, that leaven, leaven at the whole lump. And it's going to cause all the other stuff that it tells you about, like we did uh, back, we did the uh, thing about the purging of all the leaven. We, did, we talked about how leaven, when it comes in, it causes uh, chaos. It takes away peace from the body. You yep. see? So like, if a, and, and by the way, if a guy goes, if a brother goes, uh, uh, ends up being corrected on something, and then he doesn't like it, he can go his own way and teach that doctor. But and if you want to join that guy, go teach that doctor with him. But don't be hiding like you ain't building with the brother. See, that's where the shame comes into play. We're not ashamed of the gospel. But if you, if you gotta hide that you're building with a particular guy because you're ashamed of it, because you because you don't really you wanna play both sides, dude, the most high we already know you're playing both sides. You playing both sides when you was in the body because you was you you wanted to bring chaos and you couldn't bring it and you had to remove yourself. So a lot of times you gotta examine exactly why it is that you wanna push something because you could be pushing something out of the desires of your own belly just like we tell brothers like hey listen the gospel itself is is the simplicity of the gospel it's, it's, it's the gospel is about peace yep, yep. it's about it's about peace to be have, have with the most high through faith in yahushua right, and then amongst the, yep. the brethren unlike how it is out here in the world they can't trust one another and don't get it twisted the brother said the, the simplicity of the gospel but this is a hard walk, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. The, the, the walk is hard. Yeah. Yeah. It tells you through much tribulation yeah. Yeah. Into, into the kingdom. Uh -huh. So you're going to have these type of situations that happen. Um, and you know what? It actually makes you stronger when you get through it. That's it. Because see, now we see, you see examples of, fall, of, like, of a heresy, the damage it does, false brethren, uh, false sisters, whatever. And then you say, oh, dang, you know what? That's what the Most High was talking about. I mean, remember what Paul said. He said he had to warn brothers about the space of three years that 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 some that there'll be some men among you that will speak perverse things, not sparing the flock. Yep. Those perverse things are going to take away peace. And he warned them for the space of three years. So why would they do those things? They spoke perverse things because they had other ulterior motives. I mean, that's what some people have. They have ulterior motives. Our motive should be pushing the truth of the gospel and upholding it until the time your house shot comes. Yeah, so you got some yeah, yeah. Philipp Philipp Philippians chapter 1 and verse 17. But the other of love, knowing that I am sent for the defense of the gospel. Oh, no, no. So go up high. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach a machiach of envy and strife. Some preach machiach of envy and strife. See, you got guys, they really push a doctrine out of envy and strife. Because maybe they felt like they ain't got a revelation. And then they'll go curate a doctrine to try and elevate themselves and then push it around the body. Because they're really doing it out of envy. Right. They're really doing an envy and strife. And then they, they go, after they push it out, out of envy, they then try and cause strife by orchestrating a division. That's why some of these people preach, some of these people teach, some of these guys ain't preaching out of love, because how do you know this? How many of them guys, those guys, how many of y'all can really trust one another now? Because there's no honor among thieves and these different, and, and when these type of things go down, if you go join with a man that you knew that basically was being, uh, was a false, a false accuser, you can't build with them now. So out of envy, you may just push stuff against who you feel did you wrong. And now out of envy, you're basically creating new doctrines, just out of really spite, to be honest. So if you're doing it out of envy and strife, it's not going to work for you. 
see, the thing about it is, we have to pull down strongholds and correct false doctrine. It says rebuke, reprove, and all long suffering the doctrine. So when we do it, we're not doing it because we're trying to be whatever. No, we're doing it because the gospel says so. So if you're preaching out of envy and strife, you ain't gonna go far, but others do what out after that? And some also of goodwill, the one preach a Mashiach of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Yeah, so there was some that was actually pushing, that was preaching not sincerely to add affliction to Paul's bond in the ministry. Yep. So what they were trying to do, they was pushing out doctrine just to make it harder for Paul to do his ministry. Yep. They had no intention to do it out of goodwill. Yep. So some of these guys, y'all only pushing out lessons because all you want to do is just try and make it harder, what you perceive to make it harder for a brother. But all you're doing is just setting up out loops to yep. be dumped. They put a strain on the, they putting a strain on it. They're, yeah, they're trying to put a strain on, on, on the ministry. You're adding, you're throwing it out there really because you're just trying to add more affliction to the bonds of the ministry that brothers like Paul and the other disciples were suffering. Yep. You have no intention of doing it out of the goodwill of your heart. Because when you exhibit the characteristics of a, of a true brother, he's going to be hospitable. Okay, he's going to be apt to teach. He's going to be there for you when you're down. Some of these guys, you ain't even really had the truth. You have brothers over here in the body that was really there for you in hard times. When you was depressed and down, brothers helping you. When you was down financially, brothers is coming out of their pocket to help you. Giving alms. When your wife needed, when your, if your wife needed something, you got it from brothers. You got all this love, brotherly love from brothers, but then when you go, you can't even do that for other people. So where, so where's the goodwill? Where's the good intention? The, the goodwill is to, pre is to preach this for the sake of the elect. Uh, it says endure all things for the elect's sake. Yep, that's right, uh, man. Not endure all things so I can, you know, if you're sitting back there thinking that this thing is all about like, oh man, my family, my family, my family, my family, bro, your family gonna be good if you keep doing this work. Yep. You keep pushing this gospel, your family gonna be good. But if you sit back and isolate yourself, and then you wanna basically be like a, fa a family man only, and then you don't wanna feel, go out here and get the elect, you don't wanna basically build with them guys that you separated yourself with to advance the gospel, but you out there faking, the faking it like as if you're gonna basically add affliction to other people's bonds, you're not doing it sincerely. Yeah, you can't pick up the plow like in Ezekiel chapter 8, your righteousness will be counted for. That's right. right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, so we you have to examine. You can't take your hand off of the plow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's like, it's, a, it's work. You got to be constantly doing the work, man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You got to be out here pushing the work in search of the elect. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, build with them guys. Like, you know, brothers be talking, I mean, uh, chats and then brothers be going to different cities, flying, driving, building with other brothers, you know, trying to figure out a way to uh, to get the uh, ministry on another level. Earlier today, the brother was listening to the Bible, but he was at my spot. He got a revelation in the book of Psalms. He brought it out here. That's adding to the body. We're doing that for the sake of make, getting the understanding to be even more clearer to the hopeful elect. Brothers didn't do that and say, man, we got to, you know, we trying to just make some new doctrine. No trying to figure out what the scripture is talking about because we know that what we're reading is going to be give us give eternal life so that's what we're focusing on is that now if you got a false doctrine it don't matter who you are if you if, especially if you're out, outside of us you're going you know you'll get your stuff checked and you can get all messed up about it when you get corrected but at the end of the day ask yourself if you was pushing the right thing and if you feel if you feel it's too hard for you you're going to fall out because, right. because you know, because if you can't stand on the truth, you're not going to stand stiffly for the word. That's right, man. Like we were saying, you got to be on the same accord. Mm -hmm. Like what Yahweh Shah said in John, in John uh, chapter 17, Yahweh Shah said he hoped that all everybody could be on the same accord like he is with the Father. Yeah. You know, so we got to be on the same accord as Yahweh Shah and and and, and right. the Most High, man, of what these scriptures are saying. Come on. Uh, and if you uh, not. Then you pushing something false, man. Yeah. Uh, strive, strive for the truth unto death. That's right. The Lord shall fight for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, fight for the truth. You know, you, 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 if you're a man, you, uh, you know, be the head of your household. Don't let your don't let your don't let Satan tempt your woman to overthrow the whole house and, and take it over. 
Because you're fighting for the truth. You're fighting for the truth. You're standing on truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you got to stand on something. It says, there's a saying, a man will stand for nothing, fall for anything. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be able to say, hey, I'm going to stand on this. It's like this. A lot of people, you got guys that came in among us, they was ashamed about the baptism doctrine. They got baptized and later on when they started thinking about it. They was worried about what other groups was going to think about uh -huh. it if they talked about baptism. So they left. Because they couldn't be on one accord with us. And they went in peace and did their own thing. You guys do their own thing. They're going to not push baptism. They're not going to push the gospel. The way in which someone uh, will get received salvation, that's on them. I'm supposed to take heed to the ministry, like Paul said. You're right. You're right. But we, but we okay with them going because we know we'd rather have peace. 